Welcome in to the Fox 7 Sports Office. Julian Martinez here, joined in studio by Jeff Ward, host of the Jeff Ward Show, ESPN 102.7. Jeff Ward, all streaming platforms as well. Yeah, right? yeah the po podcast as well. But Jeff, uh, obviously we're coming off a huge week one victory for the Longhorns, 52 to zero. Uh, I, I was more impressed by the defense. I don't know. I mean, in a game in which the Longhorns put up 50 points, that the defense shutting down Colorado State like they did, I thought that they were most impressive. What about you? What was yeah, your biggest takeaway? So, I mean, there's a, there's one absolute takeaway, and that is never put too much into one way or another, good or bad, into a first game, especially when you're a 35 point favorite. So, mm -hmm. you just sort of look at a first game as: do you check the boxes? Do you play solid? Do you play disciplined? Do you minimize the penalties? And then if you're a 35 point favorite, do you want to get out of there healthy? And they did that. I mean, Texas did. I mean, arguably they checked every single box you could have. So it's all good, but they're about mm -hmm. to step up in weight class. Yeah, in fact, even a box they checked was too. They even got to get the second unit in there. We got to see yeah. a little bit of Arch Stadium got super loud. Yeah, yeah. The Arch out there for the first time. Well, not first time, but like first time this season. Well, I yeah, I mean, the crazy thing is if you go any look at any site today, it doesn't necessarily list the Texas score. Every story, every headline is going to be Arch Manning going four for four or whatever it is. Well, you got to mind that algorithm from time to time. Yeah. We, we, <laughs> we all know it. We're yeah. on the, yeah, the, man, the Manning it. algorithm works every time. Oh, yeah. That shoot yeah. your headline to the top of the yeah. list right there. Yeah. But no, let's, not to overwrite what Quinn did. Quinn yeah. looked good. I mean, it sure. looked a little shaky at the start there. I, sure. I got to tell you, I was a little underwhelmed at the start of the game in the offensive line because obviously the interception, right? Yep. So just the pocket collapse, Quinn yep. gets outside. He did have open wide receiver. They showed us later in the broadcast that yep. he had open wide receiver there. Tries to do too much, gets the ball tipped out of his hands and yeah, interception going the other way. But I mean, Colorado State couldn't do anything about it. Um, yeah. But like once they got rolling in that second quarter, it just seemed like all systems go. We weren't looking back. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a it's first game. Uh, you're going to, like I said, you've, you've got to, you've, You've got to take the good with the bad, and there's going to be bad, especially in college football, where you don't really have that much time to prepare. I mean, people don't realize how short that preseason is, certainly compared to the NFL, even compared to high school. You practice more in high school than you do in college. So, you know, the takeaway is you just have to be really careful about the takeaway on extremes, really good or really bad. But it's uh, those mistakes are magnified starting next week because you step up <laughs> completely in weight class. In fact, I would argue that Texas plays – I would say the second best defense they'll face all year will be Michigan's. The toughest defense will be Georgia. Mm -hmm. But Michigan, Michigan's going to have three players taken the top 20 of the draft, maybe even higher than that, maybe top 15. Yeah. They have the best defensive lineman in the game, interior defensive lineman in the game. They have the best corner in the game right now. And then they have the best tight end as well, who was basically all they had on offense a week ago. So the defense is top class for Michigan. Mm -hmm. The offense is clunky, really, really clunky. And I, I, would, I would submit that for Texas, I think you get to 28, you win. You might even just get to, you might just need 24 to win. That's how, that's how suspect that Michigan offense is. Yeah, it's going to be an absolute rock fight. I mean, Michigan, they're coming off this game with Fresno State yeah. where it just didn't seem like they could get anything going. They they're did. playing two quarterbacks right yeah. now. I mean, I, last week when we were talking about uh, – going against a Mountain West opponent. I mentioned last year's game against Wyoming for Texas and how sometimes, you know, you could overlook an opponent. Yeah. I don't know if Michigan was overlooking Fresno State. It kind of seemed like, yeah, they're trying to just get, like, that two-quarterback system figured out, yeah. trying to figure out their running game because Donovan Edwards didn't really get any real momentum in there as well. And it, not that they're going to be, like, the type of offense that drops back and throws it 30 times anyway. Right. But it didn't seem like they really even had that in their arsenal. No, I, I don't think it's a matter of them overlooking someone. I just think they're starting from scratch. I mean, there's you have a hard time finding anyway this top 20 from a year ago being gutted like they were offensively. Not to mention you, met, you lose your head coach, who is the offensive coordinator. So – I, I, I think they're that much of an offensive mess right now. If you're going to play Michigan, I'd get them right now. Because once they yeah. figure it out, they're going to have talent. They just, you know, I mean, look, bringing back a veteran quarterback means everything in the college game. I mean, it means everything. So they're starting from scratch, and nobody wants to alternate quarterbacks. Nobody wants to switch. If you switch, mm -hmm. that means you don't have anybody. But I think they're in this phase right now where they've got to figure it out. And the way the game is set up now, you're trying, it's sort of like the NCAA basketball tournament. You're trying to peak at the right time. Yes. And so you've got a while, believe it or not, to figure it out, particularly early in the year, because you're just playing. I, I, don't, think, I don't think anybody thinks they're going to win the Big Ten, mm -hmm. but they want to get a playoff berth. And so you're trying to figure everything out by the time you get to October, November, December, you're playing well enough that you do get launched into that 12-team playoff. 
Well, what do you think it meant, though? I mean, because the trap game narrative was thrown around for, like, Colorado State going into this Michigan game yeah. for Texas. What do you make of them coming out here and saying, no, 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 we're going to hang 50 on this team. We're 35-point favorites, but we're still going to hang 50 on this team no matter what. That's a good look. It's what you want. Um, like I said, they were as sharp as they could be. Now, now, granted, they started slowly, but, I mean, you put 52 points and you give up none. Uh, I don't know what you know. I don't know what else you can ask for except the last the last box to check is do you get out of a game like that healthy? And Texas yeah. did. I do think that Norvell and them played it a little bit more conservative than I think yeah. uh, underdogs should. I was right. like waiting for them. It's like okay, your air raid offense. Are yeah. you really going to challenge the secondary? And with that said, I thought the secondary looked a lot better than last year from what I could tell. You yeah. know, again, you're trying. You're saying don't yeah. make sweeping assumptions off of week one. But Jade Barron basically like running the route for the uh, wide receiver there and that big interception against uh, the Colorado State quarterback in the second quarter. I thought that I was very impressive. Um, that was the real only time I felt like Colorado State tried to challenge them yeah. deep and pick yeah. them apart. Um, another thing that stood out to me because we have our questions about the running game coming off the two major injuries that we suffered in camp, uh, how Trey Weiser and Jaden Blue and that combination was going to look. And I thought they looked efficient. Yeah. Uh, Jaden Blue kind of struck me as like a bit of a bowling ball when he would go in there. And uh, he was hard to bring down. And I think that that's going to be a pitch that I think this Longhorn offense is going to really need going into this, again, rock fight in Michigan. Yeah, well, I mean, two things you're going to have to have. One is the elephant in the room for Texas the last couple of years has been their secondary. It's not exposed very often, but if you look at the games they get beaten, it's it's because they get torched in the secondary. Not going to be a problem this week. Uh, I, no, it's not coming. <laughs> it, may not even, it may not even be in the air at all this week. That's why I think 24-28 wins it for Texas. Um, but, I mean, that that's what they have to, they have to improve that. It's not a risk this week, but that's the thing that is – that has stopped them in their tracks. I mean, they've won, they played well offensively, in fact, the entire last season. It's just eventually they run up against a good quarterback and they end up getting torched. So if you had to find an area where they had to improve, you know, if you want to go deep in the playoff, that's the area they're going to have to improve because sooner or later, you're going to run up against good quarterbacks. Not that many in a year, but you're going to run up a few. The second thing is, is they've got to have a running game, especially against Michigan. You become predictable against Michigan, they'll tear you up up front. It is a mm -hmm. completely different weight class. Like I said, it's the second best defense in the game. So for Quinn Ewers to get time, you got to stay away from third and eights and tens and fifteens and things like that because you get predictable against Michigan and they'll turn into fourth and twenty five. Now, you did mention they have a all-pro corner in Michigan as yeah. well. And I anticipate he's obviously going to shut down one side of the field. Yep. But one thing we've been talking about all offseason with the Longhorns team is that they have a deep wide receiving room. And I think we saw that against Colorado State to the point where I'm not even sure, like, who is really the alpha wide receiver yeah. right now. Uh, I think it was Golden that had two touchdowns. Isaiah Bond had a touchdown in there. I think he was the recipient of that no-look Archman or Quinn Ewers throw yeah. uh, as well that was trending across the Internet. Um, who would you say really establish themselves as, like, the favorite target? Um, I think it's going to eventually be Bond. Um, I mean, I think he's, you know, he's he's – had plenty of snaps. He's had big games. He's played in big, big under the lights in big games. I mean, I think eventually he's their guy. But they have that luxury right now. Again, they're they're thinking the same way everyone else does. I need to be as good as I can be by the end of the year, November, December. That that's that's when that rotation of eight and ten guys turns into six guys, and then that's when you're going to know. You probably won't see it for sure, probably for another three or four games. I mean, they've got a, yeah. Texas got a schedule outside this Michigan game. Which, I mean, when was the last time Michigan was a five and a half point underdog in Ann Arbor? Yeah. I mean, think about that. I mean, you that's caught him at the right time. Uh, him at the yeah, perfect absolutely. Time. So, and I don't think it's a ridiculous line either. I mean, they're just, they're that clunky in offense. But once you remove this Michigan game for Texas, I mean, really the entire season about mid October, those back to back games against Oklahoma and Georgia define their season because they got a lucky draw the first year in the SEC. I mean, they have really have easy games. They're just sandwiched that two weeks in October defines their entire year. And it was fortunate, too, they also get that bye week luxury yeah. before even the Oklahoma game. Yep. Uh, we talked about it a little last week, but like the road games, the toughest road games you have remaining are going to be that game in Fayetteville and then College Station. So, like you said, they did get a favorable draw schedule wise this year, um, but winning Michigan, regardless of how it looks on paper, we again talk about all the losses uh, yeah. that they have on their team. It still is going to be beating a top 10 team at the start of the season, sure. which as we look towards this like race as far as who's going to get in, who's going to get out. Obviously, who's going to win the SEC is going to largely be dictated by that game against Georgia. However, um, those wild card spots, you know, need to be. Yeah, sort of I mean, look, it's, out. remember, once you get outside the conference champions, 
it's once again, it's a beauty contest. And yes. I think beauty contest name and being a blue blood matters and Texas and Michigan have that. Mm -hmm. And then it's strength of schedule that matters. And Texas doesn't have necessarily in the SEC doesn't have that. Yes. So a game like Michigan, particularly if you can pad points, you come out of there with eight, 10 point win. That, that means a lot. It means a lot to that committee once they're starting to seed people, once you get, you know, wipe out the conference champions who get who get automatically. What is your score prediction? How are you feeling this week? Oh, God. Well, I would, first of all, I'd say first to 28 wins, uh, okay. certainly if it's Texas. I mean, I, you, I think you can even make an argument that 20, Michigan getting to 24 is hard to <laughs> see right now. Yeah. And I'm not, I mean, that's a combination of the Texas defense may be that good. We don't know yet. Maybe it is. But. People, that, that was not a mirage you saw a week ago from Michigan. They just don't have the players yet. They don't have the quarterback yet. Yeah. They just they don't know who they are. Um, so them getting 24, 28 is hard to see. I mean, you pass for what well, they have 120 or something in their very first game, and that was a struggle. <laughs> yes. So uh, yeah, I, I think I think Texas gets to 24, 28. They got to win. I think I'm with you there. I, I feel yeah. like. 28 to 13 is the number that I kind of put in my head coming into yeah. this matchup as well. Because, yeah, I just feel as though, first off, again, I mentioned it in the first half, but Pete Kwiatkowski, this defense, they did a good job against Colorado State sure. because I don't think Colorado State is actually going to be a chump offense throughout the year. Right. They'll even out as things go on, right? Yeah. But they made a statement. They made them conservative, and they erased what was an air raid offense. Michigan doesn't have that. Yeah, yeah. Michigan right now, obviously they want to identify as a running team, but I don't think Donovan Edwards, certainly if they start him, is good enough to be. Yeah, honest. well, what you don't want if you're Texas and what Michigan wants to do is they want to take the air out of it. I mean, they, they want they want to shorten that game as mm -hmm. much as they can. As good as their defense is, you still want to keep them off the field. And so I, I think Michigan, the smart thing to do is just run it until Texas stops it. Yes. And then maybe even keep doing it because you don't want to get what Michigan doesn't want to do. And, you know, you would never tell your team this, but the, the reality is you, you don't want to chase points. You don't want to spot all of a sudden Texas comes out and make a mistake or two. You throw it when you shouldn't. Texas jumps out 10 points or so. Now you're caught. You're trying to catch up. Yes. And they're not at all built for that. They weren't built like that with Jim Harbaugh. So it's certainly not that way now. That's what they have to be fearful of is they just need to settle in and just keep that game as close as they can as long as they can. How would if you're Michigan, how would you go about this quarterback deal? Do you go with Alex Orgy who can use his legs, make some stuff happen and be a problem matchup there? Or do you throw out Davis Warren who yeah. a little bit dink and dunk and wasn't really moving the ball drastically? Yeah, but obviously they trust him more to throw the ball. Yeah, that's it. They're in a tough spot. I mean, on one hand, you would you. you you would probably go with the guy can run it. Again, like I said, you want the best running game you can to keep Quinn Ewers off the field. So that, if you really set your side on trying to beat Texas, I, I'd stick my runner in there. That said, though, is that really what they're going to be six or eight weeks from now? Because you're not going to beat everybody every week by running your quarterback 25 times. I mean, you're not going to live very long that way. So <laughs> I, I just I, I think that they have to ask themselves – who is the guy that's going to be playing for this team in mid, late October and November? What's the best chance to win in late October, November? And I'm not saying you sacrifice a game against Texas, but you're early in the year. You're playing for a playoff spot. What's, can you get to be a better passing team if you take your lumps right now? And they're just going to have to ask themselves. I mean, you keep switching guys. You keep switching up the offense. You become really, really predictable. Can we talk about kind of like the aura of stepping into the big house too for yeah. this Longhorns team? I feel like this has to be – at least in my lifetime, I'm, I'm a young Longhorn fan, yeah. relatively, you know, hitting 30. So, you know, losing, okay. out of, walking out of my prime Ouch. a little bit. Ouch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> with that said, uh, this feels like the biggest environment that they've stepped into in a long time. Like, I can't think of too many other college football it's environments. It's one of the coolest stadiums in the, in the entire country. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> even, Tus even Tuscaloosa doesn't feel as no, big as the no, big house. No. Today. This is, um, I, I've never been there. I mean, I've been to yeah. South Bend, which is spectacular. I played in Palo Alto, which is great. I played in Auburn, Alabama. I mean, you, you've, you've got a lot of great stadiums, but this is you know, arguably one of the top three, if, if not if not the coolest spot to play. So absolutely. it's on the bucket list. If you're yeah, a college football yeah, fan, that's one yeah. of those ones that you got to yeah, check out. Abso absolutely. Um, so, and, and players yeah. love that stuff too. I mean, uh, you know, this idea, oh, you're playing on the road. It's a nightmare. Yeah, not like you've been there before, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. They've been around and getting to play in a place like this is, is really cool. And it's, um, you know, this, it's, I don't know. I've never been there, so I don't know what the sound is like, but it's not going to be contained like a lot of places. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a air. giant open air stadium. 
Yeah, I, I hope that they don't get lost in the bright lights. It is a day game, so they won't have to look at any lights at all. But If you get lost in the bright lights now, you don't belong in that playoff in a few weeks. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I uh, hope this game doesn't turn into that. But uh, like you said earlier, I think the key for them is just you, you can't – you got to get ahead. If yep. you get ahead, yep. then this Michigan yep. team doesn't have the ability to dig themselves out of a large right. hole. So, uh, yeah, if you could – even even 10 points, I feel like, might be no, absolutely. monumental for this Michigan team to overcome. But, Jeff, I appreciate you dropping you by, man. This has been a great conversation. Yeah. And I hope we could do it a lot more this football season as absolutely. well. So, again, Jeff Ward Show, ESPN Radio, 3 to 6, I want to say. Yep. Yeah? Okay. 102.7, Julian Martinez here. If you want to watch our broadcast, of course, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, Nightly on Fox Local, the sports office. Dennis De La Pena will be back. John High will be back. Cliff Thorne will be back. And I'll be back. Julian Martinez. Stay safe, happy, and healthy. We'll see you next time. For the day one, the diehards, the first timers, the old timers. For all the rivalry matches, buzzer beaters, and come from behind miracles. It's not just stats and wins and losses, it's the moments. The shots you can't believe went in. The times you can't do anything but believe. And it's all streaming right here on your connected TV anytime on Fox Local. The Sports Office, streaming anytime on Fox Local.